<laughs> hey what's up garden friends Jeff here so what are you doing hope you're doing well I'm great making a mess so figured why not pick up the camera and bring everybody along to enjoy all the dirt all the fun stuff that's going on with the repots and whatnots this right here is a dwarf banana which it's it's probably in the thumbnail and the title I don't know if I even need to explain what's going on here but I need to repot this and I thought it'd be a good thing to talk about because it's a plant that I get a fair amount of questions on when it just comes to growing them indoors versus outdoors and what to do for people who don't live someplace where you can keep these outside all year and you gotta move them in and out of the house so this is Let's do it. Already partially filled this container up with an all-purpose potting mix. As you can see in there, it's a very nice blend. When it comes to a potting mix for banana trees, I'm talking about people like myself where we have to have them indoors and outdoors. I like to use a mix that drains well, holds onto some moisture, is nice and airy, which we can see this as you squeeze it, comes apart, and it's organically rich. And I'll be adding more earthworm castings to this mix. This potty mix also has, I'm looking at the bag right now, it has alfalfa meal, kelp meal, feather meal, and uh, yucca extract. All great things, especially for banana. Bananas like a lot of nutrients. I have the tripods in the shot. That's not gonna look great. They're always hungry, always thirsty. They want lots of mineral content and it needs to hold on to some moisture, but still drain well. And that's particularly true if you're like me and the plant's going to be going inside during the winter time. Because in the winter time, we don't grow bananas the same as we do during the summer. When they're outside and things are nice and warm, everything's toasty out. They're much easier plants. Keep them well watered, fertilize them. We'll talk about all that after I get this potted up, but generally pretty easy plants. Inside, different story. Go ahead and get that lifted out of its container. Got some nice roots on it, right? Nice healthy plant. They aren't overly wrapped. Even on the bottom, they're looking pretty good. I'm not really even concerned about loosening those up, but if you are, you can just go in and just very gently tickle the side of the root ball. Bananas are one of those plants where if you disturb the roots on them very much, they just throw a complete in total fit so if i don't need to go in and work a bunch of stuff out from the roots then i don't bother typically when we pot a banana that isn't very well established into its container you can expect them over the course of a few days to just have leaves that start to wilt down and droop and just look really really sad it's fine just water it like you always would check the soil if it's dry like the top inch or so make sure it gets a good drink and uh, pay attention for new spear growth out the top. Want to see some movement out of that spear. Sometimes it'll take them a while to get there. Sometimes it can take them a while to get there because when you put them into a new container, bananas are kind of like a bird of paradise in the sense that they will seem to be just sitting still for a moment. By a moment, I mean generally a few weeks and then all of a sudden, boom, you start to get growth out of them. When they have all this open space to fill in, they tend to do that. So even though the plant doesn't look like it's growing, usually a lot going down on in the container and once those roots start to come up to the side and the plant will go oh, okay we're good and start to push up some new growth this needs a little bit more pruning but i think i cleared up enough space in here to be able to get some potting mix in there the brown stuff that's down there generally just pulls right off it is good to get that off just because critters like to hide in there so having less spots for the bugs to get in is a good idea particularly more for when it's indoor time than outdoor time. And you may be wondering, what type of banana is this? I don't know, tag just as dwarf banana. That can mean lots and lots and lots of different things. There are tons of different types of dwarf bananas, probably some sort of Cavendish, some sort of Acumenita, something like that. Without the proper label, I'm not going to make any guesses because there could be so many different types. The general rule of thumb when repotting anything is usually like to go an inch to two inches on the outside diameter of the root ball that's already established on that plant and try and get it about an inch down. With the banana, I'll go further down into a container. If you go a couple inches down, that would be fine. Because they like water so much, it just makes it easier to hold the hose over and give it a very heavy drink without having to, you know, water it and then wait for the water to drain down and then water it, wait for the water to drain out and give them a nice big drink when there's more of a gap there on top for water to, you know, pool up and work its way through. Go ahead and get this back filled with my potting mix. People usually seem to like to have some sort of potting mix recipe when I do videos like this. For bananas, I would say something probably three parts peat or coconut core would be fine. If you have water that's neutral to more on the hard side than peat would 
probably be better because coconut's more neutral. Bananas like things more on the acidic side. So three parts of that was probably, I would say one part perlite or some sort of coarse sand, something to help with drainage. And then some coconut chunks or pine bark, something to make it nice and airy in there. So perlite will also do. Compost, earthworm castings, that sort of thing. Just something to liven that mix up because as I mentioned, I mean, they like nutrients. They like a lot of nutrients. So even though this potting mix already has a good amount of organics in it. I am still going to add some earthworm castings. I know there's already earthworm castings in this blend. I want to get some more in there. And I did slightly overfill this just because I anticipate watering it. And then the soil kind of, you know, it's like burps, right? Little bubbles and it will come down some more. Earthworm castings are a nice, gentle source of nitrogen for plants. Not something I usually spend much time working into the soil either. Usually just putting it on top and watering it in does just fine. Doesn't usually need much more than that. And this has nothing to do with anything in the video, but I have these Tritoscantia right here. These are Nanooks that I started a while ago. I have like three or four of them left, so I figure I might as well just throw them in here because I think they look nice with this pot. But don't worry about that. It has nothing to do with anything with growing the bananas. That's all there is to that. It's not that complicated. Sometimes things can get overdone when it comes to banana care. If you're growing them for edibles, purpose, then I would pay more attention to your soil blend, but usually an all-purpose potting mix really is just fine. Once the plant's been in the container for a while, adding some slow release isn't a bad idea because, you know, I keep saying they love the nutrients, minerals, I should say. They really like a lot of nitrogen and phosphate, so the options there outside of your all-purpose fertilizer would be something like, uh, what would it be, bone meal? Great option that's available to the plants more quickly, and there's rock phosphate, which there's some debate around the usage of it about whether or not the nutrients are actually available from it. I see discussions and literature that goes both ways on it. It's supposed to be something that releases more slowly, so you could, in theory, do both. Main thing to know is that when it comes to phosphorus for, well, really for any purpose, it is something where it's not going to be very available to the plant if you have a higher pH. If you're providing a slow release, or an all-purpose, something that has the phosphate in it, and like you've also done the bone meal and those sorts of things, you're noticing those spots that would indicate there's a phosphate deficiency, then it might be a good idea to check the pH of your soil, which is always a pain to do. It's not something I usually enjoy doing, but it's just about eliminating variables, what might be going wrong there to make those deficiencies go on. Nutrients can get bound up. This is a fresh potting mix. I'm not too concerned about making sure the phosphate is available because it's got lots of good stuff in there. You can always add a soil acidifier if your soil is at a higher pH. Bananas generally prefer to be between like 5.5, 6.8, they're usually okay up to 7, but just below 7 is a good range for them because it's slightly acidic, right? Which would be below 7. The, oh, I didn't mention, there's a hole in the bottom of this pot. I've been talking about drainage and then I just assumed that everybody would know that, but I usually need to point it out. Big hole, drilled an extra large hole in the bottom of this pot. It had one that was about, I don't know, that big and I drilled it out to be about that big. But the water can move right through. It's important in general, but it's mostly important when it comes to winter survival in the house. Outside, gonna keep this plant well watered all summer. The soil doesn't need to dry out very much at all, as long as it's warm outside. And by warm, I mean like over 75 degrees Fahrenheit. Indoors, whole different game, right? Because how often is it that warm in the house? Is the plant actively growing? You don't need water sitting around those roots if the plant's just hanging out and dormant. So if you don't have a really bright window for them or grow lights for them and your house isn't really warm, it's only like over 75 degrees, then I typically let these dry out at least 50% of the way, or I just wait sometimes. I might take the plant inside and let it tell me when it needs to be watered. That's not something to do over and over and over again, but it gives you an idea. When the leaves wilt down, they'll get really limp and flaccid looking. That's when you go, okay, the plant needed water. Before you water it, check and see how dry it is, then you know how often the plant's going to need to be watered. Everybody's home's different, humidity differences and lighting, airflow. You know, I don't know what's going on in your house during the winter time. Maybe you live someplace where the AC's blowing. I have no idea, but if so, why, why is your banana inside? Take it outside. They're so much easier to grow outside. Pretty basic stuff. If there's anything to take away from this, it would be well-drained potty mix that holds on to a good amount of moisture and is organically rich because they love nutrients. Made that point, right? Hole in the bottom of the pot. And then just general banana care. I would say part sun to full sun. They would prefer full sun. You're gonna get more stout growth, more fuller looking plant with full sun. And don't let the soil dry out very long during the summertime and during the wintertime. 
you, you better watch it. You gotta be careful. They rot out very easily during the winter time when you have them inside. This is going to be on drip. I have a drip head that's, I don't know if you can see it. There's a drip line back there, see it right there? So there'll just be a little spike in here. That'll keep this plant watered just fine, but it does need an initial watering in to get the soil nice and consistently moist. Oh, and then there is of course the discussion of just overwintering bananas in general. You don't have to keep them in their container when they go inside. If you live someplace where you have a uh, cool, dark, dry space for them, you generally can go ahead and cut the foliage off. Some people will lift the entire root ball out, shake out as much of the soil as possible, throw it into a paper bag and store it someplace cool and dry. You're just storing that corm down there. It's like a bulbous type growth, but it's not a bulb, but it's, you get it. Then replant them when it's warm outside and then they'll take off. That's an option if you have those conditions. I don't really, I used to be able to do that in my garage, but things have gotten quite toasty in there with my new heater, so they generally need to stay actively growing, or at least in like a semi-active growth state, which is what they would be like in most people's homes during the winter times. So they'll just kind of sit there and chill. Don't expect much out of them. Just do your best to keep it alive. You may end up by the time spring comes around with just like a couple sad looking leaves on it. It's gonna be okay. Get outside into the warmth and into the sunlight and it'll take off again with water and nutrients, right? Because thirsty, hungry plants. I talked about all-purpose fertilizers, bone meal, rock phosphate, those things. There are some other great options. Bananas typically respond really well to like the seaweed extracts. They really like that. Always a good option. Oh, and make sure you wait till it's nice and warm outside to repot the banana. If you, you have a banana and you want to pot it up or repot it, don't do it when it's cool outside. If the low temperatures are dipping below, I'd say even below 70, just wait. Just wait until it's warmer. They will respond much, much, much better because they're a plant that really loves the warmth. And when it's below, like I said, generally below 75, they tend to not do much. Not that they don't grow, but that's not anywhere near the same as when it's nice and warm outside. So I, I guess if the nighttime temperatures are in the 60s but your daytime temperatures are in the upper 70s, it would probably be okay, but just be careful. Be especially careful to not overwater when temperatures are cooler. Having them in a nice humid environment, very beneficial by the way. So if you indoors have near a humidifier or lots of other plants to keep the humidity up, that will keep them much happier. Isn't it cute? I love the like the super dwarf chunky bananas. I think they're adorable. Comment down below, say hi. Love talking to everybody. Tips, tricks, suggestions, always appreciated. It is impossible to remember everything in one video, especially when it comes to the different types of soil amendments and compost teas you want to drop your recipes and those sorts of things down there for people